What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. Dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I am Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. <laughs> <laughs> this movie fucking sucks, dude. It's so oh, bad. Oh, God. This is going to be the most wild episode of the show. First of all, um, we'll get we'll get this out of the way. This is a review this week. Normally, we're kind of on and off with reviews every other week. Uh, you are getting surgery. I'm getting a, it's a minor little it's minor, thing. Yeah, don't worry. Don't it's worry. A thing. But it's, it's, it's on my nose. It's going to let me breathe better. I explained it more in the previous episode. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's gonna leave my face swollen. So we have to back. We have to record a bunch of these before his surgery. Reviews are easier for us to record. We we hinted at this movie last week a bunch. I don't know if any of you guessed it, but we're doing 2005's House of Wax. What a piece of shit. <laughs> we had so much fun though, right? I guess. <laughs> You're so sad. The problem is that this movie is an hour and 52 minutes. It's so long. It has, and obviously, obviously, they didn't give a fuck about this movie. This is one of the worst scripts I've seen. Yeah, which is interesting because I was looking at who wrote this. Chad and Carrie Hayes also wrote The Conjuring, which is a very good script. (laughs) I know. Wow. I think this movie stinks of studio knows i gotta make a horror movie i don't know what time of year this came out i'm gonna guess it was a summer movie they they gotta have a horror movie come out to just make some money put paris hilton in it advertise around the fact that paris hilton gets murdered in it it's it's kind of shitty but whatever it'll make money because teens are gonna come to it so i don't think yeah that's my running theory on this movie is that it was just made to sell tickets to people who wanted to see this cast mostly paris hilton but also Jared Padalecki, I think, was maybe known mm, by this point. I don't know. When did Supernatural? Maybe. I don't know. Chad Michael Murray. Chad Michael for Murray. Sure. He's a, 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 what's her name? Alicia, Alicia Cuthbert. Cuthbert. She was. The girl next door. Well, uh, was that yet, though? Oh, she was maybe 24. Not. She was in 24. Uh, uh, yeah, she also As was Jack Bauer's daughter. So I think they just want to make a movie, stick these hot teens in there, sell some tickets. Why make it an hour 50 minutes then, man? I know. Make it the minimum. Make it, make it 90 minutes. It's cheaper to make your movie. You'll make more profit, but no. We got to make this hour and 50 minutes. Hour and 52 minutes. And boy, do you feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So what we're saying right off the top, not a recommend? No. <laughs> no, it's so Even bad. though there were things we laughed very hard at, I don't think I could recommend <laughs> it either because it's just too long. It's it, too it long. It drags. Um, and the good things are few and far between. Dude. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. We all, yeah, we always like to point out good things and there are very few isolated things in this movie that like, the direction I would will say is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really think it's because clearly everyone involved with this, the director, um, Jaume Colette Serra, he did The Orphan, which I think is another one that'd be so fun to review on the podcast. Uh, the Shallows, which is that Blake Lively shark movie that I actually wanted to see but oh. did not. And the upcoming Jungle Cruise movie. Based he also on, does. Like, the Ride? Yeah, it's oh. The Rock is in it. And uh, a bunch of Liam Neeson movies, like The Commuter and stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah, he has a good reputation. Um, Solid directing. Yeah. There's some good shots in this. The writers, yeah, they wrote The Conjuring. They're clearly capable. I think this was just, you know, it was a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie sucks. It is a, we said this last week, but it's a remake of a remake. Uh, this is a remake of the 1953 House of Wax with Vincent Price. But the Vincent Price one was a remake of Mystery of the Wax Museum, 1933. Interesting. And that stars, that has Faye Ray in it. Oh, wow. And I was looking at footage from that one because I've never seen it. It was a two, I think it was like a two-tone Technicolor movie. So if you look at it, it's very weird because it's a film from 1933. It's in color. Oh. And it's, um the way it's done is it's, I think it's a red and a green they filmed like the red and green tones and they lay them on top of each other. So you do get like a, when those mix, you get like the skin, you get skin tones and everything. Interesting. And it, it looks a little weird, but it is bizarre to look at Fay Ray in color. Cause yeah. I just always think of her as in black and white. Cause she's in King Kong. Like she's the lady from King Kong. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Even just go look at the trailer for that one. It's neat. That's cool. Yeah. 
But um, yep, remake of a remake. That's where we're at now. Yeah. I, I spent the entirety of the time we were watching this movie on an exercise bike. So I'm relying entirely on your notes. And I was sitting there biking my ass off and petting Lucy because she was sitting on the little bike tray mm-hmm. that's meant for a laptop. I don't know how I would have gotten through this movie if I wasn't doing something like that. Yeah. At least I got my fucking exercise in. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so this movie begins. You ready to revisit this whole fucking thing? I guess. Thing? Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Uh, okay. All right, so we start in 1974. There's a lady smoking cigarettes and making wax figures in her kitchen. There's a little kid that gets dragged in by the dad, and there he is throwing a fit, and they're all just yelling at him, like, why can't you be more like your brother? And the brother is sitting in another chair eating cereal like a good boy. <laughs> like a good boy. And Cheerios. the bad kid scratches his mom's hand, and he gets slapped so hard. We slap this kid so hard, and then <laughs> title card. <laughs> Well, he gets strapped in, too, to his high chair. Yeah, There's, like, they, leather restraints on it. And then they it. duct tape him on top oh, of it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, the chair looks like the chair in Halloween Resurrection that they find that was planted by Buster Rhymes to make you think that, oh, Michael oh Myers my lived God. this way. This kid actually lived that way. He did. Would this have been two years after that movie this opening is weird because i there's like potential for creepiness in this opening uh, i guess they they never show anyone's faces it's <laughs> like all shot by like a top down kind of perspective yeah. or like cow and chicken parents type yes. like below the neck and that was kind of frustrating very it reminded me of a music video from around that <laughs> i don't know why i oh I like an, speak of the music oh boy oh man very of its time mid 2000s like emo rock there is some marilyn manson i don't know man you put it all together in this context and i fucking hate yeah, it yeah in this movie it's all bad because it's all played to be like ah, this movie is so hardcore and it's like no yeah. i'd rather just listen to this music all this my chemical romance shit oh boy i never got into mcr i'm sure we're gonna get hate comments for that i never i knew one song of theirs and that, that song they played plays in the opening during the credits. credits and we sang along smash cut to to title now we see we're present day 2005 paris hilton is looking for cheap apartments in a newspaper which she's never done <laughs> the place in try back up for three thousand. yeah good this is paris hilton trying to act because she doesn't know what this experience is like trying to be a normal person <laughs> um she was looking for for apartments with her friend carly who's alicia cuthbert and yeah it's fun just watching her try and play a normal teen doing mm. teen stuff she's not good she's not oh she's no not she's good not actor. good so Jerry Padalecki shows up and his name's Wade. He's Carly's boyfriend. He's Carly's boyfriend and he's all pissed because Carly's brother is going to come on their road trip and they're all road tripping to a football game. This football is the game. stupidest It's kind of thing. like ambiguous. They're like, it's the biggest it's college the biggest game, of the, game of the year. So what? Is it the Rose Bowl? I don't really know, I don't know. where they're going. They make... The brother, played by Chad Michael Murray. I think they make him Carly's brother to have this, like, mirror relationship with the, the oh, brothers absolutely. that we saw in the beginning because they're twins. They're twins. And he's like, I'm, he jokes out, like, he's the evil twin because he's had trouble with the law and he's, like, the bad boy and she's, like, the good. But it, they don't play it like they're siblings. Even you said at the end of this movie, it looks like they're they're gonna fuck. Oh, there's there's a lot of sexual tension between yeah those two. So you, I mean, you get it right off the bat with uh, Wade, Jared Padalecki being upset about her brother coming. And I, it's like, oh no, not your hot brother. I know. I it's kind so of weird. after a while, it read to me like, is he jealous? Cause they're into each other it's very weird yeah yeah like they don't act like siblings no their chemistry is not a sibling chemistry and you know me i love the sibling relationships in horror movies i love to see that explored (laughs) that's not getting explored here that's just like a oh we like the brothers wade hates her brother too because her brother doesn't like wait like it's a whole thing it's not explained very well because alicia cuthbert is going to graduate and she's going to move to new york and yeah we get the vibe that wade is more of a small town guy he's not going to go to new york and which which like jared padalecki is bad casting for that make the brother a very minor character and have him played by that fuck from scary movie who's in oh, this dalton wait what'd you do go to the barber shop and ask for a he-man haircut or what <laughs> Shut up, Dalton. <laughs> yeah, Dalton. 
he seems like a goofy brother. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. You know? But then they won't look like twins. And we got to have twins because of storyline. No, we don't. That's what I'm saying is just <laughs> throw that out. Please fix your fucking script. No, because we have to have parallels, James. <laughs> and themes. Themes. Yeah. Then there's there's another guy, Blake, who played the human counterpart to my to Cousin Skeeter. Yeah. Uh, cousin Skeeter. He was Cousin Bobby on Cousin Skeeter. Yeah, he was. So we're just going to call him Bobby. I don't really. I, oh, yeah. Blake. He's Blake. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> so that's our and he's Paris Hilton's boyfriend. So we got yes. Paris Hilton and cousin Bobby, and then you got uh, Alicia Cuthbert and Jared Padalecki, and then Alicia's boyfriend, Chad Michael Alicia's Murray, Alicia's brother, <laughs> Chad Michael Murray. <laughs> Easy mistake. Sorry, yeah. Alicia's brother, Chad Michael Murray, and, and then Dalton. Dalton, played like I said by the guy in Scary Movie who was Bobby, like the Billy Loomis of Scary Movie. Yeah. Uh, don't know what the fuck Dalton's doing it here. His relationship isn't really explained. He's just kind of like this like dorky guy who hangs around with them and has a camcorder that he's recording everyone with. He exists for a specific reason that we'll talk about when we get to it. But I think it's just he's he's just we can say it now. It's uh, it turns out that the brother covered up like a like a car crash incident that he, Dalton did. No, they stole a car together well okay so what happened when dalton stole a car and i guess chad michael murray covered for him because like chad michael murray's rap sheet was already like so he was like whatever i'll just cover for you because it doesn't it's a good matter. line it's a it's sure, a good sure, line sure. he's like your jacket was clean my one's already staying what's one more stain on it sure yeah so but yeah that's why dalton exists is to have that moment where we think oh this crime we thought chad michael murray did this whole movie he didn't actually do and he was covering for but you know else. what that could have been blake too that, that, sure. You didn't need Dalton for that because all Blake gets to do is be horny. Him and Terrence Hill yeah. only exist to like want to fuck each other. And then get killed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Blake also finds a shortcut on the GPS. So that's important. So then they go take this shortcut. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, Dalton is filming all of them with a camcorder. Cause Incessantly. He, he was born too early. He, he could have been a great YouTuber. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? 2005, I would have been Dalton. I would have been recording with the camcorder. I was that friend too. I filmed I, everything. I filmed everything. <laughs> I took a lot of pictures. Yep. God, how annoying was that? <laughs> <laughs> so the light in everyone's face. Too. Yeah, just like, dude, we're just trying to live, man. Yeah. So they're driving. Uh, their shortcut gets interrupted by a road detour. There's like signs and stuff. But they're so Blake and Paris Hilton are in the car in front. And everyone else in the car and back. The car and back pulls up to the side. And they see Paris giving Blake road hit. And he's recording it in night vision. Yeah, Dalton's recording it from the other And this has to be after One Night in Paris, right? I think it was, This has to be a blatant reference to that sex tape. Uh, But no, she was like, I wasn't giving road hit. I I dropped dropped my my lip lip balm. Who do you believe? I believe she dropped her lip balm. Yeah. I'd have to watch the footage again. <laughs> I'd have to review the footage. I can't tell with her acting. Yeah. <laughs> what it's supposed to be. I mean, there was a tube of lip balm down there that she grabs and is like, I dropped it. Mm. <laughs> this is when they pass the wax museum. Oh, they shit. see a sign for it. And Wade is very into the idea of going to the wax museum. For whatever reason. To be fair, on road trips, I'm that person too. Yeah. And luckily, we're both into that kind of weird shit. So when we drive places, we'll go stop at weird shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like, what did we drive out of our way to go see? The world's biggest rocking chair. World's biggest rocking chair. And we stopped at the giant whale in, uh, I forget where that oh, was. Oh, yeah. That whale was dope. We drove out of the way to go see a giant fiberglass whale. Yeah. And it was at, it was like in the middle of the night. It was closed, but we opened the gate and went in anyway. Yeah. I just said, made it to a crime on camera. Yeah. Anyway, so we're both the Wade of our friend group, I guess. <laughs> but um, I'd rather be the Wade than anyone else. Anyway, so Wade expresses his excitement for the Wax Museum, and I think it's Chad Michael Murray who's like, yeah, I guess I get that if you like things pretending to be other things. <laughs> Do you like that kind of stuff, Wade? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes. Yeah, I guess if you like things pretending to be other things. Oh, yeah, then there's this weird plot. Why is this here? I just realized this goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. That Paris, Paris Hilton might, might be, be pregnant, pregnant, but she's afraid You're to correct. tell her boyfriend. That goes nowhere. It goes nowhere because before she can even tell him, they both get killed. She like goes to tell him, and he's like, "Hold up, I gotta fuck with this music." Way later on, yeah. And they get killed before she even like. Yeah. There's why? no fucking purpose. Fix your script. Is it? Fix your script. Is it for us to 
care more about her? Didn't work. And she doesn't even know for sure. This is like a first draft script. It is. It's very. It's like someone wrote this and they're like, and then they forgot to like have it ain't, have any payoff. And normally you do another draft and you're like, oh, this whole pregnancy thing can go. It doesn't go anywhere. Or let's make it go somewhere. Neither of those options were taken. Mm-hmm. And instead we were left with the first draft fucking appendix. Totally unnecessary. Should have been removed. Mm-hmm. I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mad. I know, but I'm critically reviewing it. I know. That's the purpose of this podcast. I know. They they all make camp somewhere just off the side of the road, which I don't think is legal. Yeah, they just pull over and make I camp. I don't think know. think that's legal at all to do. I think you have to camp in a campground. Yeah, with like a fireplace and everything. Designated camping area. So they, they all camp off the side of the highway pretty much, and they're all just tossing the pigskin around normally. I think that is normal. Just throwing that football if you're, around. If you're athletically inclined. I've been at hangouts where like I was the only guy who like, oh, wasn't. Oh, man. I every, was, all the other guys were like throwing footballs. And I was like, that's cool, I man. I was not hanging out with the people throwing the <laughs> I hung out with a lot around. of different people. Oh, God. You know what we did instead was we did that. We threw around like a half full water bottle. Did you ever play that game? Oh, no. That's a very theater kid type thing to do. Anyway, that's the crowd I was hanging out with. Yeah, Michael Murray's a dick and won't throw the football to Jared Padalecki. He's got a great arm, though, because he, like, throws it at Blake and it, like, hits him hard in the Ooh, chest. Oh, to get that spiral? <laughs> I don't know. Please. He at least had some force behind it. Yeah. yeah. I think I've thrown a football correctly once in my life, and it was awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Or you get, that, you get the spin. Congrats. Most times, it's just kind of lobbing over <laughs> <Yeah>. itself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right around this time, they all smell a very scary poop smell. <laughs> yeah. Coming out of the trees, the big old forest fart. Yeah. I don't know. We just talked about this poop smell for a little bit. Yeah. They're like, oh, wow, this smells. And then they're like, well, let's drink. And they crack open a beer and it hits, uh, kicks off a montage right. with this more shitty music. It just is another reason for them to drink their Heinekens, man. And they're definitely drinking Heinies. And it's montage of like camcorder footage of them being yeah, crazy yeah, yeah, drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girls gone wild. Whoa. Dalton is definitely a Joe Francis type. Oh, yeah, dude. He's taking they kind of look alike too. jerking off to it. Yeah. He doesn't even, yeah. Putting that Calypso beat over it. <laughs> Chances are, if you fell asleep on a couch with a TV on around Central. the year 2005, you woke up to that music yeah. playing. Yeah. Especially Comedy Central. <laughs> Oh my, I wonder if I edited that music in, would this get flagged for copyright? Do <laughs> you think that's royalty free? Yeah, Joe Francis needs that money. He on. needs that money, man. Someone's got to pay those legal fees. We, all the girls decide to give Dalton a makeover and all the guys are pretty much yelling gay at <laughs> yeah. him because that's the year it is. Oh, look how good you look. Hey, it's like Elton John for more gay. Elton John is gay? Uh, truck pulls up and just like has its lights on them so they can't see anything. They're like, what the fuck? Yeah, and, it just and... sits there. Nick, Chad Michael Murray, just throws a beer bottle at it, which, you know, not the best way to handle it if you're He's worried. He's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. Sick arm. He's able to smash that headlight out. Yeah, get that nice spiral. <laughs> <laughs> Going just right into that headlight. And then the truck the just truck leaves. slowly pulls away. And then they go to sleep then they in the stay same there. campsite. What? You're camping in the middle of fucking nowhere. I would be too paranoid to fall asleep. Yeah. This truck rolls up, stare, like sits there all creepily, leaves slowly. And you're like, oh, th- let's just stay here. Mm-hmm. It's cool that whoever was driving that knows we we're here and was already being kind of threatening to us. Mm-hmm. Let's not move. Let's be even more vulnerable and go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> they all go to sleep. There's POV shots from a camcorder. <gasps> Who's filming? Is Dalton filming? No. We don't know. No, because here was my idea. I like your idea a lot. Yeah. You you set it up in a way to where you think it's Dalton. Because one, they don't do that. One, like right off the bat, you're like, oh, this is like someone from outside of them. But set it up where you think it's Dalton being a creeper, uh, filming Paris Hilton sleeping in her tent, and then go to the other tent and film the other people sleeping. And then the last person you see on the footage it's is Dalton. Dalton. And you're like, oh, it's du- it's not Dalton filming it. But instead, it doesn't do anything like that. It doesn't bother trying to be suspenseful or creepy at all. It's just... Instead, Carly wakes up because she hears noises outside. So she gets up to investigate noises, doesn't find anything... And they go back to sleep, and then it cuts to uh, Blake getting out of the tent and being like, 
Guys, it's 2.30. We're going to be late for the game. 2.30. Holy shit. What? I'm th- you know, for as much as they want to get to this football game, the like most important fucking game ever, they didn't set an alarm. I don't care. You don't need to set an alarm. If, that, you're, if you're sleeping in a tent, in a tent you there is no fucking place on this earth where you're sleeping in a tent until 2.30 in the afternoon. No. Because they're in the middle of a field. The sun's beating down on that tent. By 2.30 p.m., they are washed in sweat. When you go camping and you sleep in a tent, you wake up with the sun. You're up at like, and, and like if you do sleep in, because you know, they were drinking, they were partying, you're not sleeping past 10. These screenwriters never slept in a tent in their lives. Yeah. 2.30 in the afternoon in a tent. <laughs> but even though they're late because they slept in till 2.30 in a tent somehow, the poop smell comes <laughs> poop back. Poop smells back and Carly and Paris decide, let's go investigate the poop smell. Oh, I guess they're, I guess they can. Be, oh, no, because this happens after they leave. Uh, they find out that the belt on Jared Padalecki's car is fucked That's up. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So his car is fucked his up and immobilized. Fucked, yeah. But this happens after they wander off into the woods and investigating the poop smell with, uh, is it Paris Hilton who's wearing the... Russian mob tracksuit. Yeah, suit. yeah. Russian mob wife tracksuit. No, I think just Russian mob. Oh, Russian yeah. mobster. That's true. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't have to be the wife to wear this fucking like At kind of fuzzy velour, light velour blue. tracksuit. I mean, those were those were huge in the 2000s. I had one. 2000s were a gross decade and I'll. it's going to be weird when we're all getting really nostalgic for it. Oh, yeah. Because really it gross. was gross. Like it just. Look at Dalton. Dalton's white t-shirt over the shirt, the black shirt with flames on the sleeves. Paris Hilton and Alicia Cuthbert go out into the woods to find the source of the poop smell because that's super important right now. Really important. <laughs> it's so scary. And Alicia eats shit and falls down a hill. She doesn't eat, like, to clarify. No, she doesn't. Because she's investigating a poop smell. <laughs> no, she just falls mm-hmm. down a hill. And w- winds up elbow this deep in gross. some dead animals, it's, dude. N- it's really gross. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like this just giant pit of dead animal carcasses yeah and she winds up yeah like elbow deep in it it's real nasty it's so gross and she sees people hands oh there's a person hanging on yeah so everyone else gets there and helps her out a a truck pulls up with more roadkill for the roadkill pit (laughs) yeah and And charlie manson starts throwing them in there yeah apparently this guy the the truck driver is going to be charlie manson on mindhunter which that is very exciting news (laughs) yeah (laughs) So they're they're all like, hey, you know, there's hands in, in your roadkill pit. Then he leans over and unscrews one. It's a mannequin hand, and he's like, anybody need a hand? Yeah, yeah. And he's hilarious. He's really funny. Wait, yeah. So Wade's truck needs repairs. This guy offers to give them a ride to the gas station to get this part because what? It's a belt fan. Yeah, or fan belt. <laughs> fan belt, yes. But also, so this this is when they they split up. Because uh, Blake is like, we got to get to this football game. It's the most important the most game important of the year. Thing. That's why we slept in till 2.30. <laughs> and yeah. So uh, Blake and uh, Chad Michael. Murray. Murray. Thank you. I, I don't know that actor. You're, That's crazy. It rolls off the tongue for you. I keep almost saying Jan Michael Vincent, who is <laughs> not the same actor. Uh, uh-huh. Chad Michael Murray, Dalton, and Paris Hilton go with Blake to the football game. Cool. That's the only purpose of that is to get to get them out of there. Yeah, and have Jared Padalecki and uh, Alicia Cuthbert be the only ones who go into town. Yep. Because they go in with that truck driver who's like leering the shit yeah, out he's of Carly. A real creep. He's looking her up and down and he, licking his lips pretty yeah, much. Yeah, he's got um deer feet <laughs> hanging from his. His rear view mirror. Yeah, and the, the passenger door is missing the inside handle, so yeah. it's like they can't get out of the car and if they wanted to. it smells really bad. Yeah. Alicia Cuthbert looks and notices he has a hunting knife, and it's kind of played up like it's a big deal. But I don't know. He's like this dude. I would expect him. I would 100% to have expect that guy a to knife. have a knife. Yeah. Yeah. Especially a Bowie knife. He says it's a Bowie knife. Yeah. Like that. Yep. All right. That, of course. That tracks. But yeah. She's scared. He takes it out and is like, it's scary because he's like, I have this knife. But he like slams it in his dashboard and. That's a little intense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're like, they're like, okay, they get to a part of the road that's all, it's all flooded out so we can't drive across it. And they say, yep, we'll just, uh, we'll walk. Which, yeah. you know what, fair, it's probably faster than, yeah. than trying to get that car over that. For sure. But he's all offended. 
that they want to walk. He's offended because he can tell that they're creeped out by him. And he's, yeah, he's like, like, you try to do something nice for someone. You try to do something nice. But it's like, and they're like apologizing. And Jared Padalecki feels bad when they get into town that like he didn't necessarily believe there was a town. But also that dude was just like blatantly he was being leering creepy, up yeah. and down your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Maybe say that's why you're uncomfortable. So, so they get to town. They originally maybe didn't even think there was a town there because again the guy was creepy and basically took them to a dead end yeah so yeah but no there was a town right right across the dead end it's like it was visible pretty Mm -hmm. much but they get there and holy shit uh i I, i'm not familiar with alicia cuthbert's other work but i hope she doesn't have to fake laugh in any of the other stuff because here slow down speedy yeah (laughs) wonder how many teeth you have to have to win that one (laughs) It's not it's good. So bad. It's real bad. I mean, I think many girls can relate to this laugh, though. I've laughed this laugh at some shitty dude at I was dating. No, not at you. You fake laugh at me? I don't fake laugh this at you. This podcast is a lie? Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, just... So he's making dumb jokes like she walks in front of him. And he goes, slow down, speedy. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the funniest fucking oh thing God. she's ever heard. It's so bad. It's terrible. He is so boring. And she is so boring. Hey, oh, well, I guess the character. Kind of, yeah, I like Jared. Slow down, speedy. No, I like him, too. It's just this character is the most milk toast person. He does get mad at her for other guys thinking she's hot. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone else is stuck in traffic because plot. They have to be. Yeah. So, yeah, we cut back to the car with Blake and all the others, and they're just stuck on the interstate, and they're like, we're not going to make it to the football game. Let's just Let's turn, turn around, around and go and back. Go get him. That was it. All right. That's it. Fix your script. Yeah. There's no reason to have them le- just have them go to the campsite, have them there. I, I understand you want Jared Padalecki and Alicia Cuthbert to be alone when they get to the town and just have it be the two of them. Find some other fucking reason than to have them go halfway to the fucking football game and turn around and come back. Yeah. The script is so bad. Yes, it is. Hey, everyone. Just wanted to cut in really quick to one. Thank you for being so patient with our technical difficulties this week. Two, to let you know that James is doing just fine after his very minor surgery. Nothing to worry about, but he's recovering and doing great. And three, I want to talk about our sponsor this week, American Hysteria. It's a new podcast from Skylark Media, and it sounds right up my alley. It's also hosted by another Chelsea, spelled differently. It's Chelsea with a Y, but it's another Chelsea who seems like she's all about the research and doing the hard work to make something really informational and awesome. So I'm very down with that. It explores our moral panics, urban legends, and conspiracy theories, how they shape our psychology and culture, and why we end up believing them. It's going to cover moral panics, which I love. I find moral panics so fascinating, like stranger danger, satanic panic, tinky winkies, homosexuality, urban legends like poison Halloween candy, and conspiracy theories like the Illuminati's world domination. The host, Chelsea, was raised around a bunch of wild conspiracy theories and knows how easy it can be to freak out over the sensational, the rare, and the untrue. She's going to attempt to understand why we fear the wrong things, explore how these fears shape our past, present, and future in sometimes hilarious and sometimes devastating ways, and also what these bizarre panics might be covering up. I think this is really in line with what we try and do on our podcast. You kind of look at what's going on in the horror industry, what's going on in horror films, and how that correlates to our culture. And you can look at the same thing in, in things like moral panics, which ultimately are big panics over really nothing, like Tinky Winky's homosexuality. But you can kind of look at, you know, that also is driven by what kind of collectively scares us as a society. So if you like this podcast, I think you'll really like this one too. The first two episodes, uh, they're out right now. They came out yesterday, November 12th. So head on over and subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you guys. Back to the show. So the town's super abandoned. There's no one at the gas station where they need to get their fan belt. Mm -hmm. And so they go to a church. It's at like the very end of the street. 
and they open a door and interrupt a funeral that's <laughs> apparently going on. Yeah. They awkwardly apologize and shut the door. And the guy who, it, is he supposed to be the reverend as well? Like, is he? No, he's a or is griever. He, just a, he's a, he is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because there was a priest. Yeah, there's a priest Okay, there. so a guy walks out and he's like, hey, uh, they they ask if where they can find Bo because Bo they learned from the dude in the, the truck, truck that driver. he runs the gas station. He's like, oh, I'm I'm Bo. Yeah. Then he gets, <laughs> he's like, you walk into a funeral for a fucking fan belt. Okay, well let me go dump the fucking casket into the ground and I'll go help you. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Man, how terrible do you feel after that though? Right. But like they didn't fucking know. They just walked into Still, a church. Though, that's a day ruiner for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Bo is uh he's got some sideburns going on. It's he's, a good he's got like a good a good look, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's I, cool. Yeah. But and yeah, he also like looks her up and down. He does. He checks her out a little bit. And so that's when Wade gets like mad. He's like, Oh, you got another member of your fan club? Dude, you're mad at what? Yeah. You're mad at other oh, at your girlfriend because guys are checking her out? You're mad at your girlfriend because she's attractive. And it's her fault. Oh, what? Man. She calls him an asshole and he's like, But your favorite this asshole, a- right? And she's like, Yeah favorite asshole (laughs) i'll tell you what my favorite asshole is the one i have to deal with every day all right because if not then we have a problem i don't know where i'm going with that i don't know either that sounds like an argument they'd have though because their relationship is toxic (laughs) yeah mean to each other yeah because uh he's like having a fun time when they get to the wax museum and she's like yeah oh i forgot you like small towns because, like, their conflict is that he won't move. It's, it's brutal. It's so mean. Everyone in this movie sucks. So they they head towards the Wax Museum, finally, because Wade is so excited for the Wax Museum. He's, That's all he cares about. He cares about this more than the football game, maybe. Oh, yeah. Um, we cut to the inside of the Wax Museum. I think it's, like, it's in the basement, and mm. someone's sculpting some wax yeah, titties. Yeah, long black hair. He's sculpting some wax seat. Boobies. I would probably censor those wax days. The nipples were so detailed. Yeah, yeah. I actually was just thinking about that. If I put in a clip, I have to censor those yeah, wax, wax boobs. Titties, man. The apparently the entire building is wax. Like even the outside. Yes, which is insane. all of it is. They. <laughs> which like, how does it stand in summer? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Fix your script. Yeah, direct sunlight. Yeah. Uh, so it says closed, but they go inside. They go in anyway because everyone in this movie sucks. Fuck it. These are people who. Do not fear being yelled at. (laughs) You know, if I see something's closed and I'm like, oh, that nope, that's it. We can't. You you are primarily driven in life by your aversion to being yelled at. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. (laughs) I would not get murdered in this movie. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, the wax sculptures in the lobby of the museum are just random people. Yeah, it's like, aren't they and supposed to be famous? They're so yeah, because which is true. Normally, yeah, true. go to wax museum, it's like historical and shit. figures or famous people. Have you ever been to a wax museum? Yeah, you're just looking at wax that like okay, like they're cool. That, that's and, it's uh it's it's a skill to make them so lifelike. Yeah, but you know, and I think she expresses the same opinion. Like it's 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 a skill, but. It's all wax. Yeah. I I get it. Yeah. And Wade is so happy. He's like a kid in Disneyland. He is. He's freaking out. He's like, everything here is made of wax. He can't believe it. But then he gets out his lighter and starts trying to melt shit. Just randomly melt shit, dude. What? I don't understand what his worldview is because he's so... He's so overjoyed and in awe of all the work that goes into making this <laughs> stuff. And then he immediately tries to melt it. It's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they're just touching everything. There's these sculptures that are lizards, but they have lady <laughs> fronts. They're like um, they're like a centaur, but a lizard and a lady. They look like the merman in Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. And she's looking at, uh, Carly's looking at all that stuff. There's some paintings too. And a lot of it, or all of it, really is done by Vincent. It has Vincent carved into it or yeah. written on it. And I think Vincent's probably a nod to Vincent Price. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the, uh, that same person who we saw carving the wax titties downstairs is outside the window with a jump scare. It's so funny. <laughs> And, you look at it, it's just a person like <laughs> and alicia cuthbert sees him but she like gets scared and jared pedelec he's like it was probably just the wax thing <laughs> cool thanks and it was he, a person outside but you know yeah but you know what 
every other time in this movie they think there's a person, it's a wax thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the campsite, um, Chai Michael Murray and, and Dalton. Dalton are there, and they're peeing next to each other, oh, and yeah. they're just making all kinds of no homo jokes, pretty much. Blake shows back up. What did, he tells them to leave because Blake and, and Paris want to fuck. They want to fuck. Yeah. They all they just want to fuck because he's like, hey, are you guys gonna have sex? And they're like, no, we're not gay. And he's like, well, we want well, to. We are gonna have heterosexual sex. <laughs> so get out of our camp. Because I love to have sex. That's what I do. I love sex. I love sex and football. We're women. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, cousin Skeeter. <laughs> cousin Skeeter, no. <laughs> Bo, who's the guy who was at the funeral, he mm-hmm. finds Carly and Jared Padalecki. I like that we're just calling him that. <laughs> he finds them at the gas station, and he they're they, they're looking for that fan belt. Yeah, but he doesn't have the right size. They need like he a conveniently inch. does not have that's the one size that's not. I think he up just there. has the one from his car at his house, maybe. What? Oh, I think he probably. Oh yeah, because he would have been the one who stole it and then like saw what size it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he says that. Oh, I have the right size at my house because you know yep. I like, get stuff delivered there. And Jared Padalecki, it's like, oh, I have to, I have to pee. Can I use your bathroom? He's like, restroom at the house. Also, everything is at the house. We're going to the house. <laughs> <laughs> Complete. Let's go to the house. <laughs> yeah, that's not suspicious at all. <laughs> He drives them, uh, yeah, to the house. Oh, he like gives them a ton Ex- of exposition, exposition dump. While he's talking with big them. old yeah. exposition dump. Okay, so Trudy, the woman we saw at the beginning, carving wax sculptures, and it's Trudy's wax museum. Trudy's wax museum. Yeah, yeah. it's on all the signs. Namesake Trudy. Yep, yeah, it's she's famous in a way because I think someone makes a. Oh, oh, they walk in. There's a bunch of newspaper clippings of like Trudy's Wax, wax Museum. Yeah, Trudy's Wax Museum <laughs> opens to big fanfare. Yeah, talented wax sculpture takes town by storm. Yeah, and so I think Jared is, <laughs> says something like, "I didn't realize someone could get famous for being a wax sculptor, but it's kind of like a Madame Tussauds. Like, yeah, you know, it got your namesake on there. So, okay, so Trudy, her husband." that we also see in the beginning when they're strapping that kid down to a chair it was apparently a doctor and he got his license revoked for some shady shit. And so that's why they moved to Ambrose, which is the small town that we're in. Mm-hmm. And that's when she got into wax carving all of a sudden. It became this hobby that just took over her life and became her thing. Then they had kids. Trudy got a cyst in her brain and apparently went crazy and they had to strap her to the bed and just listened to her scream all day. And that's when the doctor killed himself. And there were just two twins left alone. Yep. Woo. It's a lot of information. Thanks, oh, and the Bo. twins end up in foster homes. They get separated. But here's the thing. When they're in the wax museum before this, they see those two high chairs. Mm-hmm. And they see the names on them. Are yeah. Are Bo and Vincent. I know. So how Wouldn't many- they know that Bo is... That Bo? Or at least ask him about it. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. hey, I noticed you're, you have the same name as one of the names carved into the fucking high chair. Yeah. So, yeah, Bo's, uh, the, Bo and Vincent are the two kids we saw saw in the beginning mm-hmm. being little shits in uh, 1974. Or I guess one of them was a little shit. The other one was, the other one was an like angelic brother, Cheerio yeah. eater. Okay, so Carly waits in the, the truck. Mm-hmm. The, it's Bo's truck that he drives them in. And yeah, he drives Jared's, them to his house. Jared's got to use the bathroom and get the fan belt. But Jared decides to just sneak around because... Yeah, God forbid you just fucking use the can and leave, dude. Instead, he has to explore this whole fucking stranger's house and just touch, touch everything. everything. He can't stop touching stuff. He would be the worst person to go to a theme park with. He just would not be able to stop touching stuff and you're embarrassed you're with that person. Or a museum, even worse. Oh, God. In any case... Have you ever just... been to like a museum with someone who touches stuff? Because I have and it sucks. No, but uh, one of our friends... I won't name... One of our friends recently went to a museum with uh, with their parents who were in town very recently, and their mom got yelled at for touching shit at the museum. <gasps> oh, shit. I didn't hear this story. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe you weren't over there when I went over there and heard this story. But oh, yeah, the mom man. got yelled at a few times oh, at no. the museum, and our friend was very uh, embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed just thinking about it. Just wait till you hear which friend and whose mom. Okay, <laughs> it's okay, great. okay. It's good okay. stuff. Oh no! But yeah, that's my problem with this movie. Besides everything else, is that these characters are just so They're fucking so stupid. stupid. They're just acting in a way that the movie needs them to act. Like, it's the opposite of the Blob, which we reviewed an hour ago, an hour but last ago. week. Yeah, uh, those characters are intelligent. They act at the top of their intelligence. 
Not the case here. Because they need to get the fuck out of here and get this car apart. Like, I don't... But Jared Padalecki's upstairs in this room and he finds a cow fetus that's in a a glass case. And it's like, yeah, 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 and it's playing with it and making stupid sounds. It's insane. It's so so insane. It's so stupid. Oh, my God. And then he finds what? The medical degree of the dad? He sees the dad's medical degree on the wall and a bunch of wax faces and an operating table. What are we doing? Why is... Like, okay, cool. So he figures out that this is the house and this is the family that that Bo is telling him about great fucking leave you don't like who cares yeah (laughs) and then how does Carly realize that the truck she's sitting in is the one from last night she gets out uh momentarily I think she goes to go into the house to look for Wade because he's taking so long and when she gets out she sees that the The headlight is busted so she's like oh fuck it's that weird truck that then why does she get back into the truck to make a phone call Safety, I guess. Yeah. Oh, oh no, she gets in and honks the horn. Yeah. To like, which is smart. Tell, okay. Yeah. Cool. Sure. Get weighed out of there. Uh, but it doesn't work, and the the lights go out. Yeah, all the lights the go off in the house. And then someone fucking comes up from the floor with scissors and just snips Wade's Achilles tendon. It's so gross. Holy shit. There's some good gore in this. It takes forever though. It this does. is the first time we've gotten any gore or anything like that, and it's like deep in this movie. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, the person like stabs him, and, and it's the person we saw with the long black hair in the basement car. Yeah, and this is the, the first time that we're getting a look at it. it's it's Vincent. It's Vincent. Is the he's the, Bo's brother Vincent, and he has long scraggly black hair that's a little wavy, and then he's wearing a, a wax, wax mask, mask, and he looks like Michael, he Jackson, looks like Michael Jackson, or he looks like a parody it's version unfor- of Michael he Jackson. He looks no, I was saying he looks like the the scary movie <laughs> capital S capital M version of. Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. It's real bad. Yeah. It's oh, really man. unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, hee hee hee, and well, he fucking he cuts kicks the, him in the face. Yeah, he knocks him out. <laughs> yeah, Carly calls Paris and Blake, and they're too busy fucking to pick up the phone. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You are with a group of people who are splitting up to do a very important thing where you're trying to rendezvous with certain. There's a vehicle out of commission. Yeah. Oh, but we're too busy fucking to answer to the phone. Like the they phone. see that the phone is ringing yeah. and they're like, nope, Wor- you ain't answering that. Worst friends ever. My dick is getting soaked. Yeah. I got a, I got a cousin Skeeter all over this. No. Oh my God. This is the most I've thought about cousin Skeeter in, <laughs> tw- in 20 years. I did forget that show existed I, until yeah. we watched oh, this movie. Absolutely. Carly locks herself in the truck. Bo tries to break in because he comes outside, uh, but he smashes the window and she, this was I also, I think, a, a decent sequence. Yeah. yeah, she's like hitting the gas pedal with her hand because he's grabbing her leg out the windows. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah. He's like hanging off the truck and she like crashes it to get rid of him. Wade, meanwhile, is getting dragged somewhere in the basement and the wax face guy, Vincent, we'll just call him Vincent. We all know who it is. <laughs> he's washing him up and he's sewing up his skin and it's feels we just watched tusk (laughs) like maybe he's gonna make him into a walrus (laughs) uh he waxes all his face hair off and then he basically puts jared padalecki into a saw trap yeah but it's it's literally a a trap from saw 3d the one that like impales the publicist i think through the eyes where she's on that wheel yeah it's a gore that movie is gory as it is that one was i remember that one being really gross Yeah, yeah too bad it also fucking sucks yes so she, he, I was saying she, because I was thinking of that saw scene. Uh, <laughs> he just gets covered in wax. Covered man. in hot he's, wax. He just sprayed the whole body. Yeah. So yeah, Carly is running around through town looking for people to help her, but there's no one in there that's abandoned. But then all the lights come on. Yeah. And it looks like Cars Land. It does Disneyland. look like Cars Land for sure. It's yeah. just missing a giant fake mountain backdrop. Yes. And, and all the <laughs> all the fucking giant orange cones where you can buy those disgusting macaroni and cheese cones oh (laughs) they're fucking i i always think i want one whenever we go which isn't that often i think i actually think about eating it and think about having it in my body and it's too much Mm. it's a macaroni and cheese it's a cone i think it's like a pretzel cone so it's just a big cone full of mac and cheese it's a gimmick food (laughs) it is a gimmick food so she thinks of running back into the church because she knows people were in there and she runs in there and they're all wax, wax people. people. It turns out everyone at that funeral was a wax person. All the people in the pews make sense because their their heads were like they were turned away from her 
And when the, when they go into the funeral earlier on and interrupt it, Bo turns around and you see him mm, turn around. And no but one I, else does. But yeah. I think there's also a close-up of the priest looking at them. I'm curious to go back and look at that. We should have looked back at it because my theory is, and this could be wrong, but like here it shows the priest is a wax figure. I think that in that earlier shot when it's they go actor, in, so it's an actor in the same position. Because if it were a wax figure, I think it'd be very obvious. You'd be tipped off. I too. think we would have noticed it had it been a wax figure. I think it was just an actor, and then which is a very cheap, unfair thing to do to the audience to have like him be a real actor in that shot, and then during the reveal say, "No, he was this mm-hmm. wax figure all along." Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Fix your movie. <laughs> <laughs> That was a filming problem. That's not necessarily sure, a script sure, issue. Sure. I'm I'm curious to go look back at that. So Carly hides in the church and Bo comes in and he finds her and he, he, he kidnaps her, grabs her. Cool. It's cool. Yeah. It's very good, interesting movie. <laughs> There's an old lady in a window. Upstairs um, in one of the towns. Yeah, buildings. we see yeah. her at some point around here and she like opens the curtain and closes it. And I called it. You called it. We, you called it being a evil witch style animatronic like at Disneyland by the Peter Pan ride. Yeah, so the, she's up in the Snow White ride. But yeah, when you're in the yeah, Peter when Pan you're in queue, the Peter Pan her. queue, you can see her and she opens the curtain and then closes it yeah. all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, Bo ties down Carly to, yeah, I think it is a Marilyn Manson Wasn't song. Wasn't sure if it was a Nine Inch Nail. It's not. It's, it's not, industrial yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which normally I kind of like, I like, but in it. this movie. In, in this context, I'm just, yeah, it that's, sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that. Because it's, it's like too try-hardy. Yes. Like that music's yeah. fun to listen to, one, when you're in the mood, two, just kind of on its own. But like, I feel like movies like this want to have a badass reputation and use it as opposed to like earning it themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, you know, like if Saw used industrial music, and it does because Trent Reznor does the music for the first couple, it works because it, the movie can back it up with cool visuals. This movie's just fucking nothing. It's just a an excuse to get money. He super glues her mouth shut. He does, and he's like, sorry, I have to glue that super pretty glue mouth of yours. Super glue little mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dalton and Chad Michael Murray come to town to look for Carly. Um, they pass a store called Flannery's, which I think is a reference to Flannery O'Connor, if I had to guess, which I think is a cool, like, okay, that was a fun little nod. Uh, yeah, She's an author who, but... she wrote A Good Man is Hard to Find. That's about, that's like a road trip kind of horror story. So Chad Michael Murray talks to Bo, he sees Bo outside, and Bo's taken Carly to like th- this basement, so she's beneath the, the, gas, the station. gas station, and she is by where Bo Bo and Chad Michael Murray are talking, so they're above her, and she sticks her finger out of the like the a grate, grate, yeah, to try to like just attract uh, her brother's attention with her mm-hmm. finger. And Bo notices, and her brother does, and and he like goes to like fake tie his shoes, and he fucking cuts her finger off it's with some wire so snippers. Gross. It's real gross. Yeah. Ugh. It's yeah. It's a good moment. It's yeah. one of those isolated and good moments. And you see it coming from so yeah. far away. Yeah, it, it does kind of not make sense to me that the brother didn't see anything happening. See a finger down there. Just or like, just like, like, what are you doing tying your shoes with your back to me, dude? And like, I don't know. I know the, the bow is like distracting him by saying like, look over there. Yeah, sure. I don't know. But uh, she eventually gets her mouth open from the glue and screams for him. And then there's a decent fight between Nick and Bo because mm-hmm. uh, he's trying to stab him. But um. Nick gets into the gas station, locks him out. Meanwhile, uh, Dalton, we cut to Dalton, so we know he's going to get murdered because he's at the wax museum by himself. And oh, that's right. And he's such a nothing character. He's, he is that the most ex- yeah, We're just waiting character. for him to get murdered. <laughs> but he finds Wade's wax oh figure first. God. And Wade is apparently still alive because his eyes are that's darting thing, back and like, forth. That's, yeah, they, he coats them in wax alive and they die like in the... Yeah. Which I think is creepier than... Sure, but they could have explored that more. I guess, yeah. I don't know. Never mind, because it would make the movie longer. Maybe cut out Blake and Paris Hilton fucking all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, like, finds Wade as a wax figure whose <laughs> eyes are darting back and forth. He's like, hey, I'll help you, man, and, like, reaches out towards his skin, and his face just falls oh, off. so gross. And exposes I actually gore underneath. liked this little sequence yeah. a lot. But then Dalton's such an idiot that he keeps, like, he's like, he, oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, so- oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, he keeps just, just pulling at it. Fucking poltergeisting this guy's face. When, so the thing is, is when Wade originally got made into the wax figure, he got injected by Vincent with something. I think it was just, like, a super muscle relaxant, so mm-hmm. he can't move or talk or anything. So you're seeing him 
getting like his skin peeled off and all he can do is just he, there's like sick, like tears just coming yeah. out of his eyes which i think is is a creepy thing if you isolate this little mm-hmm. bit is really scary yeah it's terrifying and gross could have been done better but yeah, yeah the concept is the concept uh, of not being able to move and just being able to feel pain is yeah. really creepy uh and then vincent comes out and kills dalton decapitates him with yeah. two knives just like easy stabs. yeah one and done <laughs> yeah that's a better death than poor wade mm-hmm. we're in the tent with blake and paris hilton oh god and there's just like there's that just classic it's, like lingering shots of her stripping it's just down a long strip tease it's just a long fucking strip scene dude and like he takes his shirt bit. off too but you know what it's done super fast and <laughs> yeah. half off camera he's yeah. like laying down so don't give me that equal bullshit yeah it's... when the camera lingers up paris hilton's asshole for a second we get we get deep in those cheeks in that in that <laughs> underwear she's mm-hmm. wearing and then she like kind of pulls them down from the front and you see like the v going on yeah. there's no outright nudity in this movie but because that's another thing with these movies with like you make it with the teen stars to get and but like there's not nudity which is fine whatever but you're always teasing it like this yeah it's very yeah this whole scene just is weird it it's a long scene so of just long. yeah them being sexy and then well, after she gets done stripping for the camera, she's now she decides that she has to tell him that she's pregnant. But before she can, the music the outside music that stops. he's playing from outside by the fire stops. And he's like, I got to go take care of the <laughs> yeah, music. Yeah, we can't play the music in the tent. We have to play it super loud so everyone who is maybe yeah, around here those can assholes. hear it. And even though you're trying to tell me something, I got to take care of this music. We can't have this conversation without, without a soundtrack. Without really loud music over it. So he goes to do that and he hears on the phone that people are in trouble. But it doesn't matter because he gets killed. Yeah. Yeah, because he listens to the voicemail from earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, but then he dies. Uh, How does he die? She comes out of the tent and finds him. He gets knifed. I don't know. Knife, whatever. How does she... She runs through the woods and ends up in a garage. In a garage. When it... It it is weird because... The campsite felt isolated. It felt far because they had to drive to the town. Yep. So she runs. But now she's in a creepy garage with a bunch of cars. Yeah. And gets into the backseat of a car. With a pointed stick again just annoying like i don't know it's kind of like pre your next movies where <laughs> like she like stabs vincent because he now he's chasing her sorry vincent killed blake and is now chasing her and she like stabs him once in the shoulder from inside a car and then drops her weapon and tries to yeah. run it's like oh you take your <sighs> goddamn weapon just fucking kill him i know but instead he hurls it through her head it's pretty cool it's a good kill because it goes through her head and she falls and it's, she's like yeah slides down and then <laughs> he comes and like pushes it even further yeah it's, it's a graphic it's fun kill. it's a fun kill and i remember this movie like i I remember when this came out and all the advertising was this whenever it came out see paris die it was i mean that was the whole thing was and so they gave yep they gave her a good gory gross death sure thanks probably golden chainsaw right there i mean the kills are decent the they decapitation are, yeah. with the knives is pretty cool Blake's is kind of lame, but... Meanwhile, Carly and Nick, they get a crossbow because they break into a hunting supply store and they run to a movie theater. They run <laughs> to the movie theater that is playing Baby Jane on what is apparently a loop over and over again I... for all these wax figures. Yeah, because of course it's filled with wax figures. And of course it's playing the song. I've written in a letter, letter to Daddy. daddy. His address is heaven above. (laughs) (laughs) Over and over and over again. And uh, Bo comes in hunting them. And of course, we get the classic Carly pretending to be a wax figure in the audience. Here's the thing with that. It's a smart thing to do. You know, in this scene, I'm like, okay, sure. That's a logical thing to do is pretend to be the wax figure. But Bo is... Bo's a freaky dude. He knows. He yeah, knows. he's had sex with all those he's waxy bodies. He's fucked all the wax figures for sure. And he like, knows oh. each one. And he's like, Sylvia, who are you sitting next to today? <laughs> oh, you got a new friend. Like, he knows immediately. Yeah, but uh, I guess he doesn't because Nick is able to cross Crossbow him. Yep. Yeah. Him. Cool. Mm-hmm. Petty Davis is still singing this whole time. <laughs> it's pretty great. Like, it's stupid. The, 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 the movie theater scene is good. It's fun. Yeah. And it's 
it always is funny to me though when there's scenes like this where you have a better movie playing in the background oh, and yeah. you're and just I'm like thinking, I just want to go watch I just want to watch Baby, Baby Jane, Jane. I don't give a fuck about this movie anymore and it's another thing where like they they what like get him down with another oh, so arrow annoying. and they don't kill him they just check him they for check ammo. him for extra ammo and they just leave him there because I just they just him. assume he's dead I never hate assume this movie I, I mean even at least pull the arrows out. Let, let him bleed, bleed to death because yeah. i okay i totally get because if you're trying to write a movie where your characters are real people i totally understand that realistically it's not fucking easy to just kill someone sure. even if they're coming after you and it's self like it's not that's yeah not to like, like a, it, to, to take not, an unconscious person and be like gonna bash their head yeah if they're unconscious sure i could see i where would it's say very, probably most people would would do not that in real life yeah. yes but in this case, it's just very frustrating. After watching all these horror movies, though, you bet your ass I would. If someone, oh, if someone had been chasing me and I get them down, they were trying to kill me. Self-defense. Self-defense. Although, legally, is it still self-defense if you have them incapacitated? If they're incapacitated, and then kill them? that is a good question. I'm not question. sure if it is. I don't know. But at the very least, cuff them. Do something. Yeah. Do something. Or like you said, pull the arrows out and bleed on their own. Yeah, or just cripple them. Like bash their knees in. Ooh. So they can't. Mm. Or just like whatever, cut out their eyes and tongues. So or just what I yeah, <laughs> whatever, dude. You know, regular shit. Uh yeah, right here I wrote that the twins have way too much sexual chemistry. Like here, for some reason, it's just more. I think because they've gone through so much. Yeah. And they want to fuck so bad. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a little Lannistery, which I and, can't get yeah, on board and with. Yeah, they go back to the fucking house. Yep, because they, you know, okay. Again, if you're in the situation, you think your friends are probably still alive. You're gonna go back and check. You know, probably. Yeah. So they're gonna go. They go back to the house to check if anyone's still alive. How is this movie still going? I wrote in my notes. The okay, here we go. This is when we learn. Yeah, this is the big thing. This is the big reveal. The twins were conjoined twins. Not uh, not the main character. Bo and Vincent the were. Bo, yeah, Bo and Vincent, Bo and Vincent were Vincent. conjoined twins. Mm-hmm. And the dad had like separate. That was the controversial shady yeah. doctor thing was him separating the conjoined twins. Yep. And apparently Vincent had uh, like half his face was part of the conjoinment. And so after the separation it was all messed up. That's why he wears a mask Yep, because of his face. Cool. And now a sequence of Carly and Nick hiding because Bo comes home yeah. to take care of his wounds. And he's like taking his arrows out he's or taking bolts his or whatever. sweet fucking time yeah. nursing and his she, wounds. She's hiding behind a pool table. just pool letting table. it happen. Yeah. And fucking, uh, uh, what's his face? Chad Michael or Nick. Nick. He's nowhere to be found during this. Yeah. While Bo was limping around, injured. Yeah. Nick is just letting it happen. Disappeared. Vincent pulls up and uh, Carly sees out the window that he has Paris Hill. All their dead friends are in the trunk. Yeah. All right, let's fucking go. All of our dead friends are in that truck. We gotta go. But no, we have to listen to Vince fixing up his fucking wax face and Bo giving him some exposition pep talk. About like, mom would be proud of what we've done. Yeah, We're well, almost done with this project. Mm-hmm. Just a few more bodies. You got them. Yep. Carly and Nick sneak to the basement because reasons. And they're down there and they're like, it's dark down here. We, we there's got to be a light for it. Let's fuck with the circuit Giant breaker. Circuit breaker it's that they just start such flipping a everything. Big circuit breaker. And a, and that's like the controls for the whole town. All the lights in the town start <laughs> flipping on and on. And Bo sees it and is like, "Guess they're by the circuit Guess breaker." They're in the basement. Oh man. Okay. This is <laughs> the best. So they see Dalton. Uh, is it Dalton? I thought it was Blake. Or it's it's Blake. I'm sorry. But they see Dalton and they're sad. And it's like, all right, Dalton sucked. It's fine. Let's <laughs> fucking go. Then they see, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And this is we laughed really, really, funny, really yeah. hard. It's not worth watching the movie for this, no. but it's so funny. They find Blake in the same uh, saw trap that had waxified Wade. Yeah, so he's all covered in wax. Yeah, so Blake has also, his body has been <laughs> has been uh, waxified. And fucking uh, Nick walks up to him and realizes that it's Blake. And he's like, I'll get you out of there, buddy. Yeah, he's like, oh no, I'll get you out of there, buddy. And just <laughs> he reaches over to, I don't know, help somehow, and Blake's head falls off. Get you out of there. No. No. Nick. Literally just touches Blake's head and it crumbles up. And, his and the face. face that this guy makes is the funniest fucking thing. Just like. Just like a, uh, uh, <laughs> it's just the uh, most hopeless moment and it's so funny 
Oh my god. Oh man. All right. Yep. Doesn't make worth watching this movie I'll, worth it, but I'll at least you, it was something. Don't worry, we'll, we'll I'll get you out of there. <laughs> All caps in my notes. End of this movie now, please. Some some time around here, they see that Bo's chair was the one with the straps on it. And they see that his wrist is all scarred. So he was the bad kid. Cool. I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't matter. They're both bad kids now. Yeah. And Bo is now super strong, apparently, (laughs) even though he's been crossbowed in the arms and legs. Oh, yeah. He's able to, like, punch punch people with the arm that he was crossbowed in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Patch up with some wax, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. Um, they, so when Vincent attacks them, they dump over some shit to start a fire in the basement. So the whole building starts to melt because it's made of wax. Yeah, the whole building's made of wax, which like, I'm <laughs> I, okay with this. The this building was, melting around them fun. is pretty great. I enjoyed this whole sequence a lot because it just got so stupid. Yeah. Yeah, Bo knifes Nick in the leg. I wrote good for him because Nick's a fucking idiot. Oh, hot take. Like, I'm, I'm done apologizing for him. <laughs> He's so fucking stupid. But he didn't steal that car. That's true. <laughs> Carly hits Bo with a baseball bat and does... Oh, she, yeah. Repeatedly. She pommels him, which... Cool. That kills him, right? It does. Yeah. It's... it's- intense it's, and it's shot very well yeah it's like it's like these careening shots from her swing to to getting hit it's like it's really cool another one shot that i just want to uh point out that stood out to me as awesome direction was when Bo finally catches up to her outside in town it's like this really o- long overhead shot of uh him chasing her and like it, it goes on for a minute and it doesn't end until after he catches up to her and i'm like cool competent directing mm-hmm. fix your script so Bo's dead Bo's dead um that we sh- that should have happened a while ago carly decides to run upstairs yeah because vincent comes after them still and she yeah she runs up the stairs let me of remind this- everyone the building's made of wax and it's melting it is them. visibly melting everywhere it's so gross it looks it, it looked like the the stairs in nightmare on elm street when she goes oh up yeah them, and the they're all gross, stairs. yeah but it's a whole everything looks like fudge it looks like hot it looks like fudge it actually yeah. looks really tasty it but, looks like frankenmuth fudge mm-hmm. yeah. but she runs she runs upstairs nine years after sydney prescott made fun of this shit building it's so stupid it's so fucking stupid but then if she didn't run up the stairs we wouldn't get like the weirdest set in this whole movie oh she, she goes into a bedroom <laughs> with a wax bed and a wax crib with two wax babies inside yeah. who are brown wax they're like yeah they look like peanut butter they baby. look like peanut butter that video baby. of that little baby covered in <laughs> peanut butter it's what <laughs> these two babies look like and they're conjoined babies so it's supposed to that's be that's right uh, and she uses it to uh, barricade the door so when fucking vincent knifes his way through the wax thing the knife goes he... down and separates the conjoined peanut butter yep. babies great love it love it more of this <laughs> stupid yeah. shit yeah dude you should have been at this scene a half hour ago yeah <laughs> there's we keep getting shots of these wax figures in the lobby melting oh, yeah, and there's one guy too. that's so funny yeah his face is like hey baby yeah and they <laughs> just melt and they expose eyes like are the, boiling. the eyes boil and the teeth fall out it's good it's really this, cool honestly, more of this yeah, scene it's so common i think uh in in movies for me to be on board for most of it and then i'm like the ending sucks total opposite yeah. here everything leading up to this final sequence blows and then it's like oh the house is melting everything after that is fun mm-hmm. it's fun melty house stuff i the the shot of the house outside melting is pretty bad <laughs> yeah but in a funny way it is yeah yeah it's hilarious um the floor too is melting out like there's just holes opening up in the floor and it looks like it's opening up to hell because there's that fire in the basement (laughs) it's really great there's a we see a chandelier crash i just can't not think of phantom of the opera especially because of vincent with Mm. his mask covering half of his deformed face (laughs) well the mask comes off finally and it just is a guy with like a, like a half kind of a fucked up face yeah it's how i felt when the in the 2005 same year the fan of the opera with jar butler when she takes his mask off he's just kind of red yeah <laughs> it's, it's like, not oh, that bad scary it's like okay the, he's scarier the, with the mask the on. wax mask is objectively scarier than his actual face yeah 
But yeah, she's like, she like distracts him enough with like, I know you were the good kid, Bo was the bad one, blah, blah, blah. And then she stabs him and he falls through the melty bed and like she falls through, oh my everyone God. falls through melted shit together and then he lands on he top lands of He lands on top of Bo's dead body and they get Sink covered into up some in wax, wax. So they and- get... <laughs> So they're conjoined again. Yes. You called it and I was so excited yeah. because I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Well, as soon as they were upstairs and Bo was below them dead, I was like, oh, they going to be conjoined yeah, again. Yeah, man. It was great. Um, at some point, Chad Michael Murray <laughs> makes a noise that we laughed really hard at. And I don't know if it's because uh, we... <laughs> I don't know if it's because we were tired or what, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> And then they just dig through the wall to get oh, out. And then, yeah, so from good. the outside, they just use, like, a shot of the, the museum and a free transform tool in After it's Effects to, like, bad. morph it. It looks like in that app, that, like, airbrush app on your phone where mm. you can, like, make yourself skinnier. Or, like, Mario in Super Mario 64 when you fuck with his face mm-hmm. and you just stretch it out. Yeah. yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like they're crawling through a production logo. Yeah. Because it's so... It's, oh, yeah, and it's coming out through House of it's, Wax. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the, the sign title. that says House of Wax. It's all melting. Yep, so they get out. Yep. Cops come. They survive. Next day, cleanup crew. I would love to be on the cleanup crew for this. Scraping off the You're just chipping wax, wax yeah. off the ground. Oh, that'd be so satisfying. Cop talking to them who I thought and hoped and dreamed was Fred Willard <laughs> at first, but it's not. <laughs> hey, kids. Hey, oh. God, so you got what caught a- up in this wax yeah, what oh, a doozy what a mess this was uh yeah i don't know they they saw the camcorder like getting taken by evidence and then somehow chad michael murray has it yeah they ask they ask the police if they can have their camcorder back and they're like sorry son it's evidence but then when they're being driven away chad michael murray pulls it out, out and he's ass, like yep, i i, I took it. it how the fuck did you get that out of how, police and then, evidence well, they don't even watch it we don't even watch the footage no. he's like this will be good memories i don't know no it's well stupid. it's gonna Fix be footage script. of paris paris hilton with a pole through her head yeah <laughs> and uh, uh, also oh. there's some needless fucking twist, twist, twist where the cops are like, wait a minute. We looked at the records. They didn't have two sons. They, they had three. three. And Walt, then who was three? <laughs> three was the truck driver. Was that creepy truck driver? Because they drive away and he's like sitting there on the side of the road smiling at them. Like, cool. okay, Why? cool. What? That has no bearing on anything. Yeah. It was just them being like, oh, it's a horror movie. Isn't it supposed to have a twist ending? Oh, that guy was a, a brother. Great, them. cool. Great, cool. Fuck you. The movie ends. My Chemical Romance plays. Yeah. Oh my God. On What's top the of worst thing, thing I can say. These are better mid fast day. So long and good night. So long and good night. Just on top of all the garbage we've just sat through, that fucking My Chemical Romance song came on and I laughed harder than I've laughed in so long. <laughs> Fuck this movie. God. One of the worst ones we've This watched. felt long even just talking through I it. I know. I know. Fuck this movie. What's worse? Wicker Man, maybe? Mm, maybe. Maybe Wicker Man. It's, they're in the same fucking field. Mm-hmm. They're in the same category. Uh, Cry Wolf wasn't this bad. No. I can't think of anything else that was maybe this bad. This movie sucks. It's just it was made to sell tickets. Uh, they didn't care about the script. Apparently they're able to write. Oh yeah, one. that's the thing. That's is the thing. They're all, you know, capable writers yeah. and dra- like. I I just think it was they gotta was, make money on. Yeah, it. they're just making looking for money during the worst era, in my opinion, for horror movies, the early two thousands. I think that's probably fair. You know, it's fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like it? Let us know. Again, the end sequence I liked. I like the kills. Mm -hmm. There's always something to find that you like, but like it's an hour 52 minutes. It's so long. There are more than 20 minutes you could cut out. Start with that fucking tent scene. We're we're done. Yeah. We don't have to talk about it ever again. Thanks. We have, uh, yeah, I don't know if I would kill count this one. Just because I don't want to deal with it again. It's a boring fucking movie. Uh, we got another review for you next week again because of the, the minor surgery that's nothing to be concerned about uh, mm-hmm. that I have. So we'll have one more review for you next week. And after that, we'll get back into the more research heavy stuff. So that's fun. Yeah. Uh, and next week will be a classic movie that I think what we have long, we could change. Uh, yeah, we but, might change our mind. I yeah, but it, whatever it is, it won't be this bad. Sure. That's for damn sure. 
You can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C A R E B E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, email deadmeatpod at gmail.com with any concerns or comments you have with the podcast. And make sure to review and rate us on whatever app you use to listen to. Yeah. My brain melted all wax and that. Yeah, feeling that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until next week, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Yeah.